What's more amazing to you, the fact that Jim Jordan apparently is going to become the latest GOP speaker candidate to crash and burn, or the fact that Jim Jordan is actually plausibly could have become Speaker of the House of Representatives? I'm, I'm, I'm asking this in the context of January 6th. I mean, what, what is more amazing to you, the fact that the House GOP is in complete chaos or that they actually, for a few minutes, thought about making Jim Jordan Speaker of the House? You know, Jim Jordan comes up a lot in the yeah, course of January 6th, of course. Uh, he's pretty integral to this uh, this whole deal. Uh, the case that really jumps out at me is this one um, individual where he's uh, standing at a Stop the Steal rally in Pennsylvania, sort of giving a speech. I think he has a bullhorn yeah. in hand. And then directly behind him is a guy who uh, was arrested uh, for uh, storm and trying to storm the U.S. Capitol in full military gear. Um, shouting, take their guns, take their guns uh, at other members of the mob as the mob was fighting with police on the west front of the Capitol and then pepper sprayed officers. And, you know, he was also hanging out with Doug Mastriano, who was the, you know, GOP uh, gubernatorial candidate uh, in Pennsylvania. There are more than half a dozen photos of them together at different events. And it really is one of these things where how closely tied uh, you see these connections between people who stormed the Capitol and the Republican uh, leadership in the House of Representatives, it really is astonishing. It is astonishing. And, you know, there's there's so much about this and in your reporting that is just extraordinary. But this what you just described, the the attempt to normalize what happened, um, the revisionist history, the fact that people like Jim Jordan, um, he was not the only Republican that voted against certifying the electoral votes, but Jim Jordan played a special role in this. I mean, he was more than just your your average run of the mill co-conspirator. I mean, he was out there, um, you know, obviously colluding with the Trump White House, uh, you know, appearing at these stop the steal rallies. But the fact that I mean, again, it, it, we get so numb to all of this, the scene you just described. Here's a man who came within a few votes of being Speaker of the House of Representatives, and he's appearing on stage with a violent insurrectionist. And that's kind of a new normal, for, at least for Republican politics. Yeah. And defending, you know, oh, I, the, the, what's happened with January 6th and the aftermath of January 6th is, is really just astonishing yes. where you had it, it really gr- like one point that I, I, I constantly come back to that just fundamentally grinds against what's supposed to be. Uh, a conservative idea of mm-hmm. the idea that, you know, government is bloated, um, yeah. government is ineffective, right? That's sort of built into the, that was at least, you know, my extended family, uh, you know, a lot of yeah. core members uh, of my family, is that's, you know, belief that they've had for a long time. That's why they're conservatives, because they think, you know, that uh, that government isn't as effective as the private sector as we sort of saw with these sleuths afterwards. But it, this idea uh, that they suggested that the FBI was some sort of somehow behind this just really assigns this degree of competency to bureaucracy, which just doesn't make a lot of sense to me, right? Like it doesn't yeah. fundamentally compute that they think that government is bloated and government's awful, but at the same time, they're just these masterminds and super geniuses who are able to pull off the perfect crime and manipulate all these well, people sure. and put people in different spots <laughs> and and leave no traces or any evidence. And it's just not what the facts are when you end up looking at all of these thousands of pages of documents and just right. see, wow, this bureaucracy really was weighing the FBI well, down, yeah. both in the aftermath and afterwards. I mean, you, if, if, you get, if, if you go deep down these rabbit holes of these conspiracy theories, and of course, you have all of you know these dark forces, the deep state that are able to manipulate these things, you know, play five dimensional chess. Um, but of course, you know, stop with the logic and the linear thinking here. There's, there's, you know, this is one of the things to, one of the moments to remind ourselves that people's minds don't necessarily work in, in a, always an orderly way. You and I were, were chatting right before we started this. And I was, you know, describing a, a college student that I think did not know what NATO was. And you, you told a, a story about one of the better educated, um, insurrection of rioters on, on January 6th. Can you just tell me that story again? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of rioters uh, mistakenly thought that they were storming the White House and said that as much Details. as they were storming uh, the U.S. Capitol. You know, you sort of expect that of the guy, you know, this one QAnon believer from, you know, Iowa um, or Ohio, who was, you know, basically really into this idea, didn't really know what he was doing, just following all these Q drops online. But then you you have it's really interesting to me when you have people who are an expert in one field and actually know that field really well, but then have this really abundance of confidence that they don't yeah. really have not really earned in other areas of life. So, for example, 
one of the individuals who stormed the Capitol and said that they were very uh, embarrassed about this is actually a doctor. You have someone who graduated from medical school, an expert in his field, who then thought he was storming the White House when he was storming the U.S. Capitol, got the complete branch of government wrong. And it just, you know, there's some, I wasn't great at science, right? When I was in high school, it was not my forte. Um, and it just is amazing to me when you have this situation where people really just have this overconfidence of their of their knowledge of something when they have none and they're just believing a lot of stuff because they read something really quick on Facebook without, you know, looking very deeply into it or without learning the backstory for how this process actually works. But it is amazing. We do live in this age where all people need is one source, one piece of data or information that confirms their priors or gets them upset about something that they want to get upset about and they're going to go with it. I, I to this moment I cannot tell you I'm sure you get even more than I do you know the, the number of of emails um or you know you know social media posts that say well Charlie when are you going to talk about Ray Epps Ray Epps was behind the entire <laughs> insurrection now you and I know that that's been completely de- debunked but we live in an age where Everything is on the Internet is on your permanent record, but it just never goes away. So any conspiracy theory that that allows you to think about an event differently, no matter how much evidence there is, no matter how many thousands of pages there are, no matter how much videotape that we saw, people are going to believe what they want to believe. Yeah, you know, I have, I have talks with my uh, my wife, who's, uh, you know, a, a therapist about uh, some of this. That's convenient I, in yeah, the house. Yeah, yeah it is it's very yeah. much so. It's very helpful in getting um, through this book. Um, but this idea that people don't feel any sort of shame or embarrassment is, is quite something to me because a lot of these, for example, with, um, with that example of Ray Epps there, you know, that has been thoroughly debunked. It's, it's just garbage, right? Like it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't compute. Um, but it's something that people will to the core of their bones defend and the people who are saying this in the first place that, you know, this was all a setup that this person was encouraging, et cetera. We'll never take the L, so to speak. We'll never admit, oh, yeah, that was dumb. Yeah. That was wrong. I was incorrect on this. And that was really what you would have to do if that person has been charged. Because just like it, t- take a step back for a second. Ray Epps has now been charged. Right. Um, now what people are saying is, oh, the charges weren't strong enough. And they just pivoted and said, yeah. wow, they really gave him a good deal. Even though he hasn't been sentenced yet, we don't know what sort of sentence he's going to get. And even though really comparatively to what other people did, he really is kind of getting singled out. There are thousands yeah. of people who are on uh, the grounds of the Capitol um, that day uh, who are not going to ever be charged because uh, mostly the FBI is focused on people who either went sure. inside or attacked officers yeah. or destroyed property. Ray Epps didn't do any of those, uh, you know, those things. And he, he was also not touched. working for the FBI. I mean, that's just I mean, he was I, not I, working I, for the I, FBI. I, I feel yeah. guilty even like, you know, giving a little bit of oxygen to this. But he was not. Do we know, by the way, why did they fixate on this guy? I mean, what what was what, what, he was just sort of camera ready, right? So the night, the big thing was that the night before on January 5th, he was talking about needing to go, you know, into the, into the Capitol. That was the main thing, right? So he was talking about, you know, I'm not going to say this, you know, I shouldn't say this. We need to even go into the Capitol. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there are lots of people talking about storming the Capitol. And just because he was caught on video saying it before, this idea that the FBI, there's this FBI setup, it just, it just really over, even if you were to think that the FBI was that diabolical, well, let's set that aside. They're just not that competent. They could not pull that off, right? They, the FBI could never do this. They're not that technologically skilled. They're not that good at covering their tracks. They're just, they're, there's this image of the Hollywood FBI that I think is just really fundamentally uh, out of sync with the reality of the FBI. And it just doesn't make a lot of sense at its core if you have an individual who, you know, let's just say Ray Epps, oh, he was working for the government. Imagine now how you'd feel, what, he's going to do time in prison just to maintain that cover? This fundamentally doesn't make sense. He wouldn't have been ch- at charge if uh, if he was actually working for uh, the government. They can't do that. So that fully breaks the the entire argument, but people can't accept that and have to say, oh, you know, I think they're the smartest person in the room and I see what's really going on here. And the FBI is just, you know, covering their tracks by charging him. It doesn't, it fundamentally doesn't make sense. Okay, so let's go to the other end of the spectrum. We were talking about the guy who has the medical degree who didn't know that the Capitol was not uh, the White House. There are people who who did know what exactly was going on. So we're talking about, I'm talking about members of, of Congress, including Kevin McCarthy, who denounced um, uh, Donald Trump's role. I mean, clearly he was there. He was on the phone with him. And yet, like so many other Republicans, they've gone along with the various attempts to whitewash it. Uh, Kevin McCarthy giving these un, this unedited tape to Tucker Carlson. 
Um, by the way, did he ever give that to any other news outlets? I mean, it was such an extraordinary thing to give it to one outlet with, with the clear intent of currying favor with him, but also of, of aiding and abetting the attempt to completely whitewash what, in fact, he had experienced. So what is the psychology of people who were fearing for their lives on January 6th, who saw you know, and experienced that attack and then have decided, I'm going to I'm going to do everything I can to convince people that it was just a walk in the park. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a really politically inconvenient fact. So I think there is this <laughs> need to sort of pivot, right? You know, what about ism? Oh, what about that? You know, what about Black Lives Matter protests? And what yeah. about this? And what about that? Um, you see very, uh, very frequently, why aren't they, you know, going as aggressively after them? And, you know, frankly, part of this that uh, the individuals who stormed the Capitol just left a lot of sort of, you know, left a lot of slow balls sort of hanging over the plate uh, for the FBI years. Right. Not really that complicated for to ID a lot of these folks who are openly bragging about uh, their exploits online and filming their crimes uh, when you compare that uh, to, you know, say an Antifa uh, sort of black clock right, measure right. where people are covering their faces and it's tough to figure out who's doing what. Um, you know, owning the libs was sort of the mantra on January 6th by not wearing a face mask and lo and behold, that makes it a lot easier uh, to identify. Yeah, so convenient. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, there's a mask mandate in place. If ever you had an excuse to cover your face while committing a crime, you had it. But, you know, that's not uh, where things went. Um, but, you know, they have, the, you mentioned the tapes. They had been making that process open, actually, right. to go into eventually, but they sort of opened it up to a lot of more right wing um, sort of bloggers uh, initially. Oh, uh, some people were running some sub stacks, some people were basically trying to undermine this entire idea of January 6th and paint this picture of January 6th as a setup. Um, and they eventually opened that up more widely. Uh, but I still have, you know, it's probably over a month old now, uh, a request out because I was trying to get footage uh, of something that happened that evening when an officer who actually later died by suicide uh, was struck in the face uh, with a pole. Um, and there, the SLUs have really been working on trying to identify who that individual was, but there's not as much footage out at night. Um, and, you know, obviously it's at night, so it's a lot tougher to see things. Yeah. But I'd requested all these videos and, you know, that's something that, has been on pause and I haven't been able to get those videos, I think, basically because of the chaos in, in that house. But, um, you know, meanwhile, they're still putting out videos or at least were in recent weeks uh, to some guy who runs a blog who's trying to figure out who uh, the person who set up the gallows um, out off of the Capitol grounds was as though that's sort of going to undermine this entire thing. Actually, it's just it's so ridiculous, but they have video of him walking generally in the direction north. And from that, they surmise that, oh, that's where the FBI Washington field office is. And they're coming from there. And it's just and you, like basic common sense and logic doesn't seem to break through here in terms of, OK, so you're saying that this person was under FBI control and their grand crime was to set up a photo op that actually, you know, it's a really despicable thing to do. But I actually think setting up a gallows could be as long as it's off the grounds of the Capitol and it's on accessible land actually probably in the realm of protected free speech, right? That's right. not something that I can see a an enumerated right. criminal statute uh, that you could actually be able to charge someone for. But they think that's going to break this wide open, that, that that one guy was the one who set this all off instead of just sort of following the obvious logic that a lot of people who thought that the country was being stolen from under them uh, were really mad and got really revved up on January 6th and that the mob mentality took over for a lot of the people who, you know, the Proud Boys would refer to as quote-unquote normies. Well, again, you know, part of what, what's astonishing, and we, we're going to use that word a lot to, to today, I think, is uh, I, I try to imagine, take a step back from what happened on, you know, to the people in the Capitol. If, if somebody attacked my house and was, you know, beating down the doors and saying, you know, hang, you know, hang something, you know, kick my dog and everything, it would take me a long time before that I, that I would forgive them. Um, but it would certainly, I can't imagine trying to minimize it later. 